Chapter 3, Little Women. Something shook Alex and he woke. What a crazy dream he'd been having. The big bad wolf, the cyclones, Ebbets Field. He had played an entire baseball game in his dreams, going three for five and helping his team win. He'd gone back to the pink bus with them to celebrate, then fallen asleep on his way to their next game. That's when the dream had shifted, bounced. The next part was hard to remember, but it was more scary. He'd been on his back, trying not to move for a long time, and it had been so cold. Ka-chung, ka-chung. His, word, his world bounced again, the real world this time, not his dream, and he was almost tossed out of his bed. Alex opened his eyes, and Jack Pumpkinhead stared back at him. He wasn't in his bed. He was back on the bus. I'm still dreaming? Ka-chung, ka-chung. The bus rattled over a port of a pothole, and Alex bounced in his seat again. Sorry about the ride, Jack said. Lester's better Bible salesman. Le Lester's a better Bible salesman than a bus driver, and he's not really all that good at selling Bibles. Alex didn't have any idea what Jack was talking about. He tried to sit up, but his legs and neck were stiff from curling on the bus, on the small bus seat to sleep. I thought I was done dreaming. You are. You were asleep for a little while, but now you're awake again. No, I mean, he was still too, too groggy to explain. Jack, meanwhile, kept staring at him over the back of his seat. Why are you looking at me like that? Alex asked. You made somebody laugh at the wolf. Yeah, Alex said. He shook his foot, trying to wake it up. You made lots of people laugh at the big bad wolf. Yeah? Why is that such a big deal? The patchwork girl, Scraps, popped up from the seat behind Alex. Gah, Alex said, jumping back. Because you humiliated him, she said, like she'd been in on the conversation the whole time. In front of 30,000 people. Nobody does that. Well, and not get eaten. Eaten? That's what the big bad wolf does. He eats storybooks, Scraps told him. And larks, Jack added on. Scraps made a num 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 sound like she was eating. But I'm not the one who laughed at him. No, but you made him look like a fool. I wasn't trying to. I was just trying to be nice. Trying to be nice to the big bad wolf, Jack said. He snickered and then quickly put his hands to his mouth. Oh, I shouldn't laugh. Rem remember Honesty, Scraps asked Jack, that TV show he had, Tricked? Oh, yes, he used to pull pranks on famous storybooks. It was very funny. He made a fake house out of sticks, you know, like the one in the, that story. And when the big bad wolf tried to blow it down, it popped right back up again, over and over and over. The wolf got so mad at being laughed at, Anasai had to go into hiding. Tracked him down for six years, the wolf did, until he finally caught him and ate him. Okay, whatever, Alex said. This was getting ridiculous. What I want to know is, why am I still dreaming? My dreams don't usually last this long. I told you, Jack said, you're not dreaming anymore. You woke up. No, I, Alex said. But before he could finish, the bus driver slammed on the brakes and they were all thrown into the seats in front of them. Dag gummit, Lester, Br'er Rabbit yelled. His head poked up from the seat in the back. S Sorry, the bus driver called. There was a family of m mice crossing the road. He looked and turned, wringing his, ha his hands. He was human, but so skinny, he'd have to run around in a shower to get wet. He wore a stained pink tie with matching carnation, with a matching carnation pinned to his faded blue overalls and had a comb over that wouldn't fool a blind man. Couldn't see them until I was right on top of them, he said. Toad's had appeared in a seat near the front. I'm happy to offer my services as chauffeur if no, the told team or the team told him at once. Dorothy's had appeared over another seat. Mice in the road means we're here. Everybody up and at it. This new ballpark was wasn't something Alex remembered from a research paper. Instead it reminded him of a world from one of his favorite fantasy series. The stadium looked like an ancient castle with ivy climbing the gray stone walls. Out front stood a statue showing a heroic looking mouse in a white padded in white padded trousers and a collared jersey holding a cricket bat aloft like a sword. Martin the batsman, Toad said, coming up alongside him. Test cricket batting average of 99.94. Alex didn't have any idea what that meant, but he knew where he was. Redwall Abbey, the old Moss flower cricket grounds actually told told him told him, but the abbey's not far from here. Alex started to go for a closer look, but Toad gripped 
grabbed him by the arm. Ah, watch your step, old man. The road was crawling with little animals in medieval clothes. Some of them pulled carts, others carried children. A few even had swords. The cyclone stepped over the locals and went inside the stadium to begin their pregame warm-ups. Dorothy attached a bucket of baseballs to TikTok's back, and he became a walking, talking, pitching machine, firing fly balls to the outfielders and ground balls to the infielders. There we go, Kansas. Looking good, looking good, Alex called as Dorothy snapped up a grounder from TikTok. Kansas, she said. It's a nickname. Nicknames, said Jack. Oh, oh, I want one. I want one. Here we go. Stretch. Look alive now. Look alive, Alex called. Stretch. He called me Stretch, Jack said. More interested in his nickname than a ground ball, TikTok sent his way, which went bouncing pat past him into right. I've never had a nickname before, you know, Jack told the infielders. Not unless Lunkhead counts, Bear Rabbit said from third. Pick it up, ears, Alex called to the rabbit. Let's see some hustle. TikTok fired a ball to Pinkerton in center as the other team came on the field. Alex couldn't help but stare at them. They were all girls, normal looking, most of them, but all girls. The oddest one had red hair tied in pigtails that stuck out from the sides of her head like she had just licked an, ele an electrical socket. She had a little monkey on her shoulder, too, dressed in a blue and yellow jersey that matched the rest of the team. Across the field, Br'er Rabbit scooped up a grounder from TikTok and threw the ball on a line to first. Alex didn't see it until the last second. He ducked just in time, and it missed his head and whacked against the dugout wall. Look alive now, golden boy, Br'er Rabbit jeered. The Cyclones let the other team take the field for practice. Back in the dugout, Alex sat next to Button Bright. So I guess you don't need a nickname, Alex told him, unless Button Bright is your real name. Oh no, the boy said. Don't call me Button Bright. I let Dorothy call me that because we go way, way back. But she's the only one. What kind of name is Button Bright anyway? No kid today would take me seriously with a name like that. Yeah, said Alex. I kind of wondered. The name's Saladin, the boy told him. Saladin Pacrilus de Lambertine Evangé Von Smith. He offered his hand and Alex shook it. Wow, you do need a nickname. A new one anyway. Saladin called his arm like he had at had the worst case of poison ivy ever you okay alex asked i've got the itch no kidding alex thought if saladin wasn't careful he was going to hurt himself all right everybody grab your gloves the avelina chicks hit first dorothy told them and remember play like your lives depend on it will do kansas toad said dorothy gave alex a look that said thanks a lot and she smiled and he smiled she wasn't too put out though Dorothy looked sharp, striking out the chick's first batter, a brown-haired girl about eight years old, who dragged her bat all the way back to the dugout. The umpire hates me, she said. Don't be so tragical, baby, the next hitter told her. Don't call me baby. The girl who replaced her at the plate was another one with red hair and pigtails, but hers didn't defy gravity. They sat next to her head like a plain old ordinary, like plain old ordinary pigtail should. Let's go, Cordelia, her teammates called. Get a hit. Alex didn't know any of these characters. He only ever read books about girls if his teacher made him. But whoever this girl was, she was a talker. He could hear her all the way from first. She talked to TikTok. She talked to the umpire. She talked to herself. She even got a hit while she was talking, driving to six pitch. And she saw just over an incredible leap from Toad. When Alex went over to hold her on first, the girl was already talking again. They call me Cordelia, but that isn't my real name, of course, she told him. My real name is Anne with an E, A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. We heard you Cyclones were using nicknames and thought it was a splendid idea, most of us anyway, the ones with imagination. Are you the new boy, the one who ran into the wolf? Everyone's talking about you. It's a wonder where you weren't eaten. What storybook are you, what storybook are you from? One of those Newberry things? No, I, Alex began, but she was already gone again. A bestseller then, something contemporary, but with Greek gods and swords and Great battles, I'm sure. Isn't the stadium lovely? I think it's one of the prettiest stadiums we've ever played in. The ivy, the flowers, moss flower is the bloomiest place to play baseball there ever was. I just love how big and open it is. More scope for the imagination, don't you think? You know what I imagined? I imagined getting a base hit to right, and that's just what I did. Not a double or a triple or a home run, mind you. There's no cause to be greedy. Not at this point in the game. Anyway. Just a single, a sensible little hit to get things going. 
You wouldn't think someone so homely and thin as me could hit a ball like that, would you? Well, I, Alex started to say, but before he knew what was happening, the girl at the plate smashed a ground ball between his between first and second, a ball he would have would have been able to get if he hadn't been distracted. He made a half-hearted dive for, for it and watched in dismay as it bounced into right field for a hit. The talking girl, meanwhile, broke for a second as though she hadn't been in the middle of conversation and took third before scraps could get it could get the throw in. Dorothy threw her hands up. What was that? She was, she kept talking to me, Alex said. Dorothy got the ball back with a snap of her glove. Focus, golden boy. Alex grumbled all the way back to first. He was beginning to wish he hadn't started giving people nicknames. So what do they call you? He asked the new, new girl standing at first. My name is Joe, but you may address me as Sir Rodrigo. Great. Another head case. Alex wasn't going to get caught talking this time, and he backed off a few steps. The cleanup hitter was at the plate, and he wasn't surprised to see it was the other redheaded girl. Her pigtail stuck out the sides of her batting helmet like wings on an airplane. Dorothy turned and waved the outfielders deeper. Really? Alex asked. That deep for a girl? Besides him, Sir Rodrigo huffed and rolled her eyes. Dorothy did everything she could to keep the ball away from the girl with the pigtails. Away, 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 until she was on the verge of walk until she was on the verge of walking her. Whether it was stubbornness or an honest mistake, Alex didn't know, but Dorothy's next pitch was straight over the plate, and pigtails made her pay for it. With a swing that would make a major leaguer swoon, the redheaded girl belted the pitch to the to left. She it just missed going over the wall for a home run, but it was just as well. If it had, it might have killed someone in the stands. The ball slammed into the outfield wall like a cannon shot, knocking mortar and rock loose in the shower of dust. Dang, Alex said, ducking and covering, covering his head in his hands. Somebody could have warned me. The ball rode around in left field until Button Bright chased it down, but for some reason he was having trouble picking it up. Wait, had Alex just seen the ivy-covered outfield wall through Button Bright? Was his character a ghost? But no, Alex had shaken his head, shaken hands with him, and he had been plenty solid then. Chick circled the bases. Button Bright still couldn't get a handle on the ball. Pinkerton flew over from center to help, but by then it was too late. Pigtails had an had an inside the park home run. It's all right, BB, Dorothy called to him. Just hang in there. Alex couldn't believe it. She yells at me for missing a grounder, and all he gets is it's all right, hang in there. Alex's coach would have benched him for playing like that. Alex caught Dorothy as they were coming off the field at the bottom of the inning. Dorothy, button bright, Saladin. We'll be fine, Dorothy said, ending the conversation. Alex threw up his hands. It was her team. Besides, it didn't matter. He was going to wake up any minute now, anyway. Button Bright handed the rest of his chances in left field without any problems, and the Cyclones hit well. But by the seventh inning, the Chicks were ahead by three runs. Making up three runs in three innings was doable, but looking around at his teammates in the dugout, Alex wondered if this team could do it. They certainly had the talent. Breer, Rabbit, Scraps, Dorothy, Pinkerton, Button, Bright. They could all handle a bat, and Toad was the best shortstop Alex had ever seen. But they didn't believe. Alex could see it see it in the way that they slumped back on the bench. What they needed, Alex decided, was something to fire them up. Alex, you're up, Dorothy told him. All right, guys, Alex told the Cyclones. Pay attention now. Alex studied the pitcher as he went to the plate. Her brown hair needed combing. She wore blue granny glasses and was missing a tooth. She'd been cool on the mound all game, but he thought he could get to her. Hey, pitcher, Alex called. You're so ugly, you make onions cry. The catcher looked up at him and scowled. You're so ugly, Alex told the pitcher. You give Dracula nightmares. You're a big old meanie, the pitcher yelled back, and she fired a pitch right down the heart of the plate for strike one. Alex tried again. You're so ugly when you throw a boomerang, it doesn't come back. Don't listen to him, Missy, the catcher called. She looked up at Alex. Lay off or you're going to get it. Oh, yeah, said Alex. He turned back to the pitcher. You're so ugly. Your parents had to tie a pork chop around your neck to get your dog to play with you. That's not true. Tickle loves me, the pitcher yelled back. She threw even harder, getting strike two. Alex, what are you doing, Dorothy called. Every one of the Cyclones was at the railing now, watching. Alex smiled. Now if the pitcher would just play along, 
Hey, pitcher, you're so ugly, he started to say, but before he could finish, the catcher popped up and punched him in the nose. Alex stumbled back and fell on his butt. Ow, for a dream, that really that had really hurt. The catcher threw her mask away and stood over him, fist clenched. You think I can't handle a brat like you, boy? Let's go. The catcher wasn't the girl he'd been trying to make angry, but she would do. He clenched his fist and smiled. A good fight would be just what the Cyclones needed to get fired up. Then, then suddenly, Alex saw the major flaw in his plan. The catcher was a girl. All the chicks were girls, and he wouldn't hit a girl. He couldn't, which meant he was going to get plum plummeled. Now, hang on a minute, Alex said, holding up his hands. I'm sure we can. The catcher dove at him, and he threw his arms over his head to protect himself. But instead of fists, there was an enamel flash and an oomph. And when he looked up, Dorothy was there, scrabbling in the dirt with the chick's catcher, punching and pulling and cursing. Yeah, get her, Dorothy, Alex cheered. Hit her in the oof. The pitcher landed on him with an elbow slammed to his stomach that would have done a pro wrestler proud. Then Button Bright was there, pulling her off, and Brer Rabbit was pouncing on a girl with a ferret on her shoulder, and the red-haired girl with the perpendicular pigtails was tossing TikTok into the outfield like a superhero, and Sir Rodrigo was pulling at the yarn on Scrap's head. And, and that was all Alex saw before he was at the bottom of the pile of chicks and cyclones, over the grunts and the yells and in the insults, he could hear the crowd roaring, cheering them on. It was an all-out bench-clearing brawl. When the umpires finally had everyone pulled off of each other and separated, Alex and the chick's catcher were thrown out of the game, and both were given official warnings that they would forfeit if they, were, if they fought again. What were you doing, Dorothy asked as she helped Alex back to the dugout. I was trying to get that pitcher to hit me, but the catcher did instead. Who is she anyway? Mary Lennox, Dorothy said. She's always looking for a fight. But why were you looking for one? The Cyclones had regrouped in their dugout, and Alex directed his answer to all of them. You have to get back at them. You got to beat them for me, all right? Gladly, Br'er Rabbit said, nursing his bent whiskers. Jack stuck his head back on. You got it, golden boy. We'll knock, off their, we'll knock their socks off, Scraps told him. That's what I wanted to hear, Alex told them. Now, I'll just, I'll just be in the locker room putting ice on every inch of my body.